Great. Okay. Welcome, everybody, to the uh, first meeting of the Fields Institute uh, number three seminar. Uh, we're experimenting, obviously, with this online format. Um, the uh, speaker today, our first speaker, is Michael Harris from Columbia University. And uh, the structure of the seminar is a little bit uh, different it, to make it uh, more accessible to as many people as possible. So uh, prior to this talk, Michael has kindly made available uh, some slides and a preparatory talk, which I hope some of you have reviewed, uh, to give you background on uh, the subject that he's talking about. And we're, going to plan we're planning to do that as, as far as uh, it's possible for every talk that uh, you will have a chance to review some background material, uh, especially for students or researchers who are not exactly in the area of the talk, to get some familiarity with the, with the background. Um, so. Uh, Again, once again, welcome to the seminar, and it's a great pleasure to uh, introduce Michael Harris of Columbia. He will speak on the local Langlands parametrization for G2. Michael. Well, thank you. Let me see if I can see myself. Yes. Uh, well, thank you, Kumar, for this invitation uh, to take part in an experiment. Um, maybe you remember that uh, in 2012, we had a long conversation in which you predicted that uh, teaching would be increasingly remote. And uh, I, I was waiting for your prediction uh, to be uh, fulfilled and all of a sudden, uh, that's, that's what's happening. And uh, there, I've been to it, I've attended a number, that virtually attended a number of these seminars over the past few weeks. And I, uh, I think it, they mostly they work, but you know, please let me know if there's anything uh, that's, that's unclear. I'm uh, going to be speaking on joint work with uh, Shakar Kare and Jack Thorne. Uh, the, there is uh, some uh, dispute among the authors as to whether there should be another E in here. Uh, and that's the, the uh, I'm being asked to chat. Oh, there's a chat. That's not for me. All right. And it's on the, the, the group G2. So representations of the group G2 over uh, periodic fields. And it's uh, the interest uh, for, for, for me in any, in any case was not so much uh, uh, related to the, the group itself, but to the fact that there was a, a strategy, specific strategy for studying the local Langlands parameterization for an exceptional group that uh, could possibly be applied in, in greater generality. So let me get into the talk. All right. So the, uh, I, I'm going to review the Langlands correspondence for GLN. For uh, those of you who are familiar with this, there will be nothing, nothing new. This is, is taken from the uh, notes from the, the uh, background talk that uh, some of you may have seen. And then I'll uh, say something about the, the general conjecture, try to formulate the general conjecture, and then go into the, uh, the proof for G2, which has several stages, several steps, uh, which are completely different, really a three-part three proof. So I'll, I'll go into that. So P is a prime number and F is a finite extension of QP. Uh, the, the local Langlands correspondence is a generalization of local class field theory. So let me remind you how that goes. Um, well, there is a canonical homomorphism from the multiplicative group of the, of the field to the abelianization of the Gawa group. The homomorphism has dense image. It contains the inertia group. And there are, there are two ways of normalizing this. We choose this normalization will play no role, uh, except uh, in, the, in the background, uh, that a uniformizer in F star, the general generator of the maximal ideal in the integers maps to the inverse of Frobenius acting on any, acting on any unramified extension of F. So there is a unique canonical homomorphism with this property. And I'm going to make use of this only for, for higher dimensional representation. So suppose you ha happen to have a, uh, a representation 
energy. I bet, let's say it's going to be a diagonalizable representation uh, to on an m-dimensional vector space over QL. Uh, and suppose it is a, an abelianizable diagonalizable representation, right? Well, then each of the diagonal entries is a, an m-tuple of character, is a character, called chi i, you get m of them, from the multiplicative group of QP to the multiplicative group of QL. And now with this m-tuple of characters, uh, we define an infinite dimensional representation of the topological group, the totally disconnected topological group, GLM of F, uh, by parabolic induction. Here's how that goes. So let's let B be the upper triangular subgroup. The upper triangular subgroup projects, uh, has a homomorphism to its diagonal subgroup. Uh, call that A, A1 to AM, they're the coordinates. And now we can use these to put together a, a character, a single character from uh, B to the multiplicative group of QL just by taking the product of the coordinates, the chi i applied to the coordinates. And then uh, we introduce uh, a space of functions from uh, G to QL that transform on the left under B by this, uh, by this uh, character, where chi is the character we wrote here and delta to the one half uh, is a normalizing factor that compensates for uh, the fact that we did not choose an ordering on these characters. So this, when we, when we put in this normalizing factor, which I won't write down, uh, then the result does not depend on the or order, ordering the characters. In to all, for all intents and purposes, not like you. Well, the Langlands correspondence uh, for abelian representations, if we start with this uh, totally, uh, this diagonalizable m-dimensional representation, call it rho, uh, which is the direct sum of these uh, characters, uh, then to that, the Langlands correspondence is correspondence between Galois representations and representations of GLM of, of F. And for abelian representations, we assign this induced representation, this space function. I didn't explain, say that uh, the group G acts by right translation on this space, so that we have, we have, we have a, a representation on this infinite dimensional vector space. And this is the space that's assigned to rho. But not always. Uh, if for most M, M tuples, chi, this I of chi is irreducible. But there are exceptional cases. And when for the exceptional cases, we have to decide what to do with each of the irreducible constituents. And in that case, we uh, Galois representations are not enough. We have to extend the domain of the correspondence to Vedenin representations, which are a generalization that uh, I won't be talking about because uh, they won't come up in detail. All right. Well, uh, I wrote QL, but really we should replace it by an algebraically closed field because we don't get all the representations otherwise. And we could replace it by its algebraically closure, algebraic closure. We could even uh, replace it by the complex numbers. Uh, but in fact, uh, the theory is uh, makes sense over any algebraically closed field. So we're going to use C as the, as the coefficients. So with this, uh, with, with this uh, definition then, an l adic representation is a continuous homomorphism to GLM C. And since we, C doesn't have a topology, what this is, this is just a, uh, a, 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 an algebraic homomorphism. So, we get a, a representation, I'm sorry, this is, this is a mistake. A, a, a representation of GL, oh yes, an L-adic representation of the Galois group is a homomorphism of the Galois group to GLMC. And then uh, we have a, a representation of GLMF assigned to each completely reducible representation of uh, the Galois group. 
All right, so that's uh, the part that doesn't require any, any additional construction. Well, for any uh, partition of M as a sum of R positive integers, we have a parabolic subgroup with Levy factor uh, GLM1 cross GLM2 up to GLMR. So it could be a standard upper triangular uh, parabolic subgroup. And now suppose uh, we have an irreducible representation of this Levy quotient, where each of the sigma i's is an irreducible representation of the corresponding GLMIF, but we define the parabolic induction in the same way. So sigma is a, is a space, is a, is a represent a homomorphism of uh, this product of the, the GLMIFs to the space of transformations of the, of some, of the group of transformations of some uh, vector space, V sigma, which is generally infinite dimensional. And then uh, we take uh, I of sigma. So this, oh, it's a vector space. I, I didn't say so, but it's a space, a vector space. The coefficients are always characteristic zero. And then we can define parabolic induction by the same rule. Uh, we take uh, functions into this vector space that transform under the operation of P by sigma multiplied by a character. And it is a well-known fact that each of these I sigmas is a finite length as a representation of G, usually irreducible. And then, so if we know how to assign, uh, ir uh, if we know how to assign a, uh, a sigma i to an mi dimensional representation of the Galois group, then we can assign i of sigma to the direct sum of these representations, provided uh, this is irreducible, which yeah, is not always the case. All right, but we are missing uh, the building blocks, which are the irreducible representations, uh, the supercustable representations that are the irreducible representations that never occur as a constituent of any of the representations we've already constructed by induction. And at the other extreme from the uh, principal series, we have uh, the following theorem. Uh, this is the local Langlands correspondence. Uh, suppose L is different from P, then there's a canonical bijection between continuous M-dimensional l adic representations of the Galois group and irreducible supercuspital representations. Uh, that's not completely true. We, these are irreducible supercuspital representations with finite, uh, determ whose determinant is a finite character. But otherwise we have to work, replace the Galois group by the, by the vague group. And it's, it's a, but there's a canonical bijection with that correction that preserves natural invariance of both sides. And I'm going to have to say something about the natural invariance later. Uh, they have to do with uh, the fact that you can assign uh, functional equations, uh, L factors and epsilon factors uh, to both sides. And these are, these are preserved. Well, putting this together with the, uh, the parabolic induction, we can associate to each M-dimensional representation of the Galois group, or, or more generally the Vedelin group, a an irreducible representation, I should say, an irreducible representation of GLM F. It, it's super cuspidal if rho is irreducible, and I should say it's a constituent of the parabolic induction if not. All right, so that's the case of GL of GLM. Now I'm going to need uh, to talk about a global correspondence. Suppose K is a number field. Now, uh, an automorphic representation is a representation of GLM of the Adele groups, group on the space of automorphic forms, cusp, space of cusp forms. 
uh, to certain such representations, we can associate compatible families of allylic representations. Uh, so pi is an automorphic cuspidal representation we let rho pi l be a homomorphism from the Gawa group, continuous homomorphism uh, to GLM of QL bar. With the following property, well, we can restrict uh, this to a decomposition group at the place V. Uh, so then we get a representation of the Galois of the decomposition group. We've already seen uh, that the representations of the decomposition group correspond to M representations of GLM of KV by the local Langlands correspondence. So the, the, the property of this uh, global correspondence is that the local representations of the decomposition group correspond to the local constituents at V. And uh, I didn't say what certain means. Well, certain means literally cohomological. Uh, cohomological means in one, in, in one respect that they uh, can, they can, uh, uh, they can be, they occur in the cohomology of the locally symmetric space attached to GLMK. And on the other hand, you can read it. It's, it's a purely, it's, a, it's purely a condition on the pi V where V is an Archimedean place, real or complex. And I didn't uh, say this, but a certain uh, presupposes that K is either a totally real number field or a totally imaginary quadratic extension of a totally real number of field. Otherwise, uh, there is very little known about uh, constructing Galois representations. All right. So that's, that's for, for GLM. Now GLM, this is a talk about G2. Uh, so we're going to forget about a GLM for the moment and just consider any, uh, any split reductive group over a p-adic field split is, uh, is not necessary, but it simplifies what I'm about to say. So if it's a split reductive group, it has a maximal split torus, I'd, uh, and B is a Borel subgroup. So this is, it, maximal torus is, is split over F, homomorph, so the oh, and then let G hat be the Langlands dual group, uh, which in the case of G2 is just G2 again. Well, the Langlands dual group contains a Borel subgroup and a torus that is the Langlands dual of, of T. And now local class field theory has a version for tori that's been known for a long time. So there's a canonical correspondence between, well, locally constant homomorphisms from the Galois group uh, to the torus, uh, the, the, the Langlands dual torus and homomorphisms from T of F to C star. Well, so if we have a, a, a character, so suppose we have a character of the torus. Well, the character of the torus corresponds to a Gawa, this is a topological character of the torus, it corresponds to a Gawa parameter, a homomorphism to the dual group. And then we can associate to chi the normalized induction of chi from B of F to G of F, which is constructed in exactly the same way. So B of F maps to the T of F, then T of F maps to C star, and then we can find the normalized induction by the same procedure as before. So the space of functions on G that transform under, under B. Ah, and there's a, a misprint, a homomorphism. Now, so you should ignore this, this, this parenthesis here. This should be the dual group G hat. Uh, a homomorphism to the dual, dual hat is a supercuspidal parameter if its image lies in no proper par parabolic subgroup. So the group G has, its, uh, has a Borel subgroup, it has a collection of proper parabolic subgroups. And we say that the uh, homomorphism is a supercuspidal parameter could also say it's irreducible if its image lies in no proper, para proper parabolic. All right. 
a conjecture. Uh, there's a parameterization of supercuspidal representations, pi of g of f by supercuspidal parameters for g. All right. So, in other words, if you have uh, a supercuspidal representation, you can get a uh, you can get a, you can find a Gawa representation that parameterizes it. The parameterization is finite to one, and uh, the main topic today. Uh, for each supercuspidal parameter, the fiber is non empty. That is to say, there is at least one supercuspidal representation with that parameter. Now, this is a pretty uh, vacuous statement because it doesn't, because you, this parameterization has to have some properties. Otherwise, otherwise it doesn't, it, it isn't telling you anything about either the supercuspidal representations or the supercuspidal parameters. And I will uh, try to explain uh, what parameters, in what sense the parameterization uh, is that I'm going to describe for G2 as natural. Well, I've been talking about piatic fields, but we can also, uh, there's a, the same conjecture uh, is expected for local fields of positive characteristic. Local field of positive characteristic is the field of power series of Laurent series over a finite field. And there's a version of A of the first step that is to say there is a parameterization and is canonical in, 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 in a certain sense, uh, thanks to the work of uh, Vincent Laforme on the global correspondence for function fields and a uh, paper of Genestier Laforme that draws the conclusion for uh, not just for supercuspidal representations, but for general representations. Parts B and C in the, in the setting of the Genestier Laforme correspondence. Parts B and C are not known in general. And this is uh, quite strange, in fact, that there, there could be infinitely many. They, have, they define a, a parameterization, but uh, that nothing uh, rules out the possibility that uh, the supercuspidal, a supercuspidal parameter can have infinitely many uh, supercuspidal representations in its fiber, nor even that there's that it's uh, non-empty. That was the starting point for me in, in thinking about this. And, uh, and we addressed this question in a paper with uh, uh, Berkeley, Tari, and Thorne, and the, what I'm going to talk about today is a continuation of that. All right. So now, uh, what is known? Well, if G is a, a special orthogonal or a symplectic group, then Jim Arthur has proved a complete local Langlands uh, correspondence, at least for tempered representations, and there's, uh, there are results for, for general representations. And how does he do this? Well, we know that uh, every Every uh, these, these these classical groups, special orthogonal and symplectic groups, are the stabilizers of uh, involutions of general linear groups. And we think about this on the uh, the L group side. So we uh, using the twisted trace formula. Uh, he the, we, the the known case of the local Langlands correspondence for GLN. Uh, gives you some information about the representation theory of G and uh, you can relate it by the twisted trace formula to that of GLN. And on the other hand, uh, you have uh, uh, the Galois theory with values in the, in, the, uh, in the Langlands dual group of G can be related to that of the Langlands dual group of GLN, which is GLN. And these parallels were built into the structure of the twisted trace formula. This is this uh, talking about it just fits into a single slide, but actually carrying out the proof involves thousands and thousands of pages, thousands of pages of preliminary work as well as 
a book of several hundred pages. And that work, that goes, gives you uh, a relation, very, very uh, precise relation between the representation theory of classical groups and that of GLN. Exceptional groups, and there aren't so many of them, but they are, they're, they're there, have no such relation with GLN. But for G2, there's a back door. The back door, well, there's more than one back door, but the back door that I'm going to be talking about is an analog of the how duality correspondence. Uh, we have a comp commuting sub computing subgroups, commuting subgroups in this group script G. So G and H are mutual commutators. G is an exceptional group, and G and H are reductive groups. The joint action of these groups G and H on the minimal representation of uh, G, so G, uh, one important fact is that G has a minimal representation. Uh, I'll say something about. And if you take the subspace or the quotient of the minimal representation on which G acts by a fixed representation, you get a representation of H, G of F and H of F and vice versa. And these also have for parts for automorphic representations. So we're interested in two particular cases. I won't say very much about the second one, especially, especially we're interested in G2 uh, commutes. It, it has, a, has a natural homomorphism to E7 and it commutes with the image of a PG SP6. And if you are, uh, if you are interested in how this works, you have to uh, start by looking at the, uh, what e, E6 and E7, they all have, all the exceptional groups have something to do with the, the octonians. There's also, in E6, there's a, an exceptional correspondence between G2 and PGL3. And the back door from G2 to GL7 passes by way of PGSP6. So these exceptional correspondences were studied uh, starting in the 1990s uh, and continuing for more than 20 years by first by Ginsburg, Rallis, and Sudri, Rallis and, and Schiffman, uh, Chan Shu Li, Diwa Zhang, Wite Gan, and especially, especially assiduously by Gordon Seven and his collaborator, collaborators. So the first part of our construction basically consists in putting together in, in selecting the, the useful uh, consequences of their work. All right. So G2 always denotes the split form of the exceptional group K is a periodic field and uh, W K is its vague group. So here's a theorem. There is a natural bijection, well L sub G, from uh, this set. This is a set of equivalence classes of generic supercuspidal representations of G2 K. and the set of equivalence classes of irreducible continuous homomorphisms from the vague group to G2 of C. We can take the complex uh, points or the, or the L-adic. We actually work with an L-adic. Uh, and rho is irreducible means that rho of WK is not contained in a proper parabolic subgroup. In other words, between uh, equivalence classes of what I call supercuspidal parameters of, uh, of K with values in G2. I didn't say what generic is. Generic means that the supercuspidal representation has a Whitaker model. And I'm just going to use that as a black box. I won't say anything more about that, all, but it's essential in, uh, in the intermediate construction. And we actually work with coefficients in QL bar rather than C. All right, well, here is uh, how it goes. We're going to start by constructing uh, global parameters. So this is a, this is a, uh, a long and indirect construction. So global parameter by parameter, I mean a Galois parameter. So let F be a totally real number field. So forget about our 
field K, K will reappear, but F is a totally real number field. And pi is a cuspidal automorphic representation of this exceptional group, the Adels of the exceptional group. All right, let G, this should have been this, I guess this is, was a script sheet before, but let's G be E sub I, uh, where I is either six or seven, there aren't any too many E's. So the I is e, E6 or E7. And let theta I be what I call the minimal automorphic representation of the group G over the field F. All right, so this is not a cuspidal representation. It's a, an automorphic representation uh, that has particularly uh, favorable properties. So as I said, H I is H6 is PGL3, H7 is P, P S P6 or PGSP6. Uh, G2 cross H I in are dual reductive pairs in uh, this in E I. So we we what have we fixed? We fixed a re an automorphic representation of G2. And we so therefore it's a space of functions on G2. And now we define a space of functions on H I in AF as follows. Well, F theta of GH is a function, I didn't say so in, should be theta I, in uh, theta I. So this is now just a space of, just a, just a, a so the theta I is a space of functions on this exceptional group. And so we just pick one. And now well, this phi is the same as this phi. We, in, we uh, pick a function phi in the contragredient to our original pi. This f theta should be, should, this theta here should be f theta. And so we just integrate. We take, this is a cusp form. So we can integrate a cusp form over, the, this is the Adels of, of G2 modulo, <coughs> the principal Adels. So this is a convergent integral and G and H commute. So this is uh, just a G cross H. We think of it as, a, as, as an element of EI and we just get a function on HI. All right. Now, if this were the how correspondence for the, for the, for the representation, uh, the oscillator representation of, of some symplectic group or, or metaplectic group, then this would be a familiar construction of theta functions. And we would know, for example, that this space of functions is irreducible. Here we don't know that. But we know something. So first, so we've just constructed this space of, of functions on, on our group, which is either, which is more familiar. So H is, H is either, HI is either PGL3 or P, PSP6. Just we get it, we have a, have a, a, a representation. Suppose we have an irreducible subquotient. Then for each place of V, pi V is an irreducible subquotient of the local correspondence. All right. So at least it tells us something. Suppose pi is globally generic. Here's a, a, a theorem of seven that's proved in our appendix. Suppose pi W is a discrete series representation for every real place W of F. So globally generic means that it has a uh, Fourier coefficient, a Whitaker coefficient globally. Then first of all, th theta six of pi is zero. And then theta seven of pi is cuspidal globally generic and in the discrete series at every real place W. But in particular, it doesn't vanish. This is a fact that was uh, cited in the literature, but had not appeared until, uh, had not been written down until uh, seven provided his appendix. So we get a cuspidal representation of P G S P six starting from G two. Moreover, uh, so this is a P S P six. We can have, we can pull it back to S P six. Uh, the map from S P six to P S P six is not surjective. 
So we have a we have but we have this irreducible representation that pulls back to a representation of sp6. It need not be irreducible, but it has a unique globally generic cuspidal irreducible constituent. And this is this is the first. Uh, this is a path to the back door. It's called theta seven. We have a representation of the symplectic group. Here's one of the theorems we use. If suppose pi v is unramified with Sataki parameter, let's call it rho v. So the Sataki parameter is a is a homomorphism, an unramified homomorphism from uh, the from the v group of f, f sub v, to uh, g two. So we have a then theta seven of pi v is the representation of the Sataki parameter R composed with rho v, where R is the homomorphism from G2 to SO7, which is the L group, the Langlands dual group of uh, SP6. So we know that the uh, parameter, so the parameter, we know this, we know the local Langlands correspondence for SP6. The Langlands, the local Langlands. Uh, representations are parameterized by homomorphisms from the Galois group to SO7. And we know, and uh, the theorem of Ginsburg and Zhang it, it tells us that it factors through the image of, of G2. And an important fact, if pi V is supercuspidal, uh, this is uh, then theta, then the, the con constituent of theta seven of pi at, at V depends only on pi V. It doesn't depend on the choice of, of pi. All right, this is, our, this is a starting point. All right. So the results are proved by the people I listed who worked on the exceptional theta correspondence. So now we want to, uh, we want to apply this locally. So suppose we have, we have our local field, our periodic field K. Now I'm just going to tell you what we can do. Uh, suppose we choose a generic supercuspidal representation, call it tau. Well, we can find a totally real field F with a place V uh, such that FV is isomorphic to, to K, and I left out a, a, an important condition, a globally generic cuspidal automorphic representation, pi of G2 with pi V equal to tau and pi W in the discrete series. And maybe I'm going to, I'm going to do something. Right. So we can find such a thing, and that means that we can apply the results of the of the of this uh, theorem. It's called the generic uh, part B. Then we get theta seven of pi, which is a which is a, a representation of sp six. It's globally generic, and therefore it has a functorial transfer, call it C of pi to GL7. It's either by Arthur's construction based on the uh, twisted trace formula or by the L function method of uh, Cogdell, Kim, Pietesky, Shapiro, and uh, Shahidi. And by that point E, it's local constituent at the place isomorphic decay depends only on tau. And therefore, we can define a Langlands parameter with values in GL7 attached starting from tau. Well, this is not what we want. We want a Langlands parameter with values in G2. 
All right. But here's the main theorem on global parameterization. So remember, our, let's remember G2 has a map to SO7. Uh, and SO7 is included in G7, GL7. So we have a homomorphism from G2 to GL7. All right, we'll call it R sub seven. So for all V at which pi V is unramified, psi of, of uh, pi V is the unramified representation obtained from pi V by functorial transfer with respect to R7. Well, this follows directly from uh, what I already said uh, at the unramified places for the symplectic group and then, and then Arthur's, the theorem of Arthur or the, put by the L function method by transfer. But the homomorphism, the global homomorphism factors to the image of R7 of uh, G2 up to conjugation. And thus we canonically have a homomorphism LG of tau from WK to G2 of C. And the parameter LG of tau is irreducible as a, as a, as a G2 parameter, a supercuspidal parameter. Because remember tau is supercuspidal. All right, well, here we're using uh, some work of, it's been around for a while. Part B, the fact that it, it, it uh, factors through the image of R7 or G2, well, that's based, that's Chebatar of density because we know that the, uh, that the, its image is contained, ha has the, the uh, it's conjugate, to an image, an element in the image of G2 by, uh, because that's the case at all unramified places. And then it's a theorem of Chenevier that if you have a homomorphism to G2, an irreducible homomorphism uh, to GL7, which is uh, whose, whose image is, uh, oh, and, and, and on a dense set of, on a dense set, of elements of the Galois group, it's contained, it's conjugate to an element uh, in the image of G2, then it is globally in the image of G2. And part C, the fact that the uh, image, that the parameter is irreducible for G2 is based on the pa uh, paper of Savin Weissman. All right, well, that proves uh, the parameterization. But we have to prove that every irreducible uh, parameter arises in this way as the image of a generic uh, supercuspidal representation. Well, first we're going to do, we're going to uh, work purely in Galois theory. So we replace C by the Witt vectors of a finite field of characters of L. We're going to, All right, this do not confuse the Witt vectors with the Vague group. Remember, so what, so, so we're starting, so we're starting with rho. So rho is a parameter. We now think of it as a parameter with values in the Witt vectors of some finite field of characters like L, and that, we, that allows us to reduce it mod L. Well, for L very, very large, we may assume uh, because that L is is, is prime to the order of the image. Remember rho, this is a finite image. It's, a, it's an irreducible parameter. So it has a finite image. Uh, it's G2 is a semi-simple group. Uh, so uh, for P L sufficiently large, uh, this is p -adic. it's not, it, it's irrelevant. So this, it's going to be, I, the, the residual image is the same as the image characteristic zero. And now I'm going for f of a number field, we write gamma sub f uh, for its absolute Galois group. And the theorem uh, is the following. We could, this is the globalization of this rho bar. There is a totally real uh, field f and a continuous surjective map sigma bar from the Galois group of f to G2 of k, k being the finite field, such that so it's surjective, 
L splits completely in F. For each prime V dividing P, there's an isomorphism FV to K such that sigma bar restricted to the V group is conjugate to our original rho bar. So you have rho bar, this gamma, the, 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 the uh, what is the question? L splits completely. L splits completely because remember there's an L attic represent, Galois representation. We want to know something about, this is, is going to be out, we're going to need some, a little bit of L attic Hodge theory here, implicitly. Uh, P, remember, P can't split completely because P, because we want the uh, F, F, V to be isomorphic to K, and K is any piatic field. More questions? Right, okay. All right. So, sigma bar is unramified outside the primes dividing L and P. And at all real places, W, R7 composed with sigma bar of a complex conjugate, complex conjugation at W is odd. Uh, this means that the signature uh, on the adjoint, uh, the adjoint representation composed with uh, with R7, the adjoint representation, so that's the signature of the representation on the, on the matrix algebra is as large as possible, all right? This is a, a, this is a, a technical hypothesis that's needed for the next step. Okay, so sigma bars as above, The carré vanton berger method uh, implies, well, L had better be bigger than 28, but it was already big. This 28 is twice the dimension of uh, the adjoint of the, of the uh, Lie algebra of G2. Then, there exists an l adic integer ring O and a lift from gamma F, uh, O with, with residue field K, remember we're not changing the residue field, but there's a lift gamma F of sigma bar to characteristic zero with the following useful properties. First, it contains a conjugate of G2 of ZL. In particular, its image is as the risky dense. For each place, V dividing L, it's crystalline ordinary of Hodge state weights. Oh, well, this is just terminology. I'm not gonna be able to explain this respect to any embedding, any l field. For each place dividing P, reduction modulo the maximal ideal of O induces an isomorphism on the images of the inertia group. Can't necessarily control the image of the whole Gawa group, but at least the inertia group. Unramified outside primes dividing L and P, and in all real places it has this still, this if you compose it with the, G, the map to GLN, GL7, it's odd. All right, so now we have an l representation, which has the parameter of interest at our prime, at some prime dividing at, at the place of isomorphic to uh, K. Uh, this odd uh, property allows us the, to, to apply the deformation theoretic methods as in carrier event on So it's, it's not always the case that you can lift a representation of homomorphism to G2 to characteristic zero, but in this case you can. Now we just look at the representation, forget about G2 for the moment, look at the representation to GL7. Well, we know that it's irreducible because it contains the image. Its image contains G2 of ZL. We want to prove that it comes from the acomological cuspidal automorphic representation of GL7. Because we know something about that. We know, we know how to attach Galois representations to automorphic representations of GL7. That's what I explained earlier. That's by the construction due to many people that is explained in the Paris book project, which I enthusiastically recommend anybody who doesn't have a copy. So we want to show that sigma seven comes from such, is, is, of that, is automorphic in that sense. 
but we can't. We don't know how to do that. So we do something weaker. Replace F by a, we can replace F by a finite, totally real Galois ex extension such that the residual image is this, the same one we started with, not losing anything, and the restriction uh, sigma seven prime, sigma seven to gamma F prime comes from a cohomological cuspidal automorphic representation of C prime and GL seven. This is proved by the methods of potential automorphy for GL seven, in this case, GLN, in this case, GL seven, as developed in a number of papers, some of which I co-authored. Uh, we need the most general version. Actually, we don't need the most general version. I think the version uh, uh, in my paper with uh, Barnett, Lamb, Garrity, and Taylor would suffice with uh, some additional work, but the, e the most convenient version to, to use is the one that's also the most general. So this is, a, this is a potential automorphy theorem, and it can be, so we can, we can lift it uh, to, an autom to the representation at the cost of replacing F by some finite totally real Galois extension. Well, that cost is, is severe because when we restrict sigma seven prime to a decomposition group at a prime dividing P, it could well be unramified. In, in, in other words, uh, the primes dividing V can, uh, the decomposition groups for F prime over F can absorb, it's possible they absorb our original parameter rho. But let's say, so I'll say V prime is a prime of F prime dividing P, D, D V prime its decomposition group, L its fixed field, and U the corresponding prime of L. Well then L sub U is our original K, sigma seven, uh, the prime extends to sigma seven and therefore it extends to the Galois group of any intermediate field, in particular L. So you've got a homomorphism from gamma L to G2 of O. And it is our original R7 composed with rho. So we haven't lost rho when we take the fixed field of decomposition group. But moreover, D V prime is solvable and we can apply solvable descent to automorphic representations of GLN when each one intermediate representation has an associated irreducible Galois representation. This is a, this is a uh, problem in general. We can't apply solvable descent in general, but we can in this case. And so C prime, the representation of GL seven over F prime, descends to an automorphic representation of GL seven of A seven. So, we don't know. We don't yet know about rho, but we know that R seven composed with rho corresponds to the parameter C L U. All right. Well, at this point, we have uh, to call on. At this point, we would have been stuck. We would have been stuck at the level of G L seven. We wouldn't have been able to get back to G G two. But there's a theorem of Hundley and U that gets us back to G2. So suppose we have an automorphic representation that we'd like the cuspidal automorphic representation, necessarily generics. Suppose the Sataki parameter almost all places comes from G2. Well, we know that that's the case, R2 of U. We, and suppose the partial L function has a pole at S equals one. This is a weird partial L function. This is the exterior cube partial L function. You know, GL seven has to appear somewhere as a as a uh, as a uh, as a Levy factor, but it does. And then there exists a globally generic automorphic cuspidal automorphic representation of G two, such that for all but finitely many places at which pi v is unramified, the Sataki parameter is the image of pi v, and it is. Oh, I think this here I'm repeating myself. Yes. Wait. Yes. All right. I should have put tempered in here. All right. 
Yes, it's the image under R7. Okay, so we've, now we've got an automorphic representation of G2. Well, CL corresponds to uh, Hundley and Mu. Condition one follows the additional restructuring. Con condition two, well, we need to know something about this exterior cube, but we already know that C7 is a SO7 type, and so it descends to SP6. And then by descending this descent, to the, by comparing this descent, the exceptional theta lift, we find that LG of pi mu is rho. So LG maps, the conclusion is that LG is a surjective parameterization. That's to say every irreducible parameter is the parameter of some generic supercuspidal representations. This, uh, you know, this can be, this argument can be compared to the uh, theorem of Zhang and Sudri, which was the first result on generic parameterizations for odd orthogonal groups. But they didn't need to use uh, <coughs> automorphic uh, descent because they already had, they could already construct a representation, go back, back and forth between G2 and uh, G and our GL, uh, an orthogonal group and, and a general linear group. All right, there's one point, one remaining uh, complication. We know that distinct generic supercuspidal representations of G2, that's part of the results of uh, uh, Seven and his collaborators, we lift to distinct representations of PSP6, but Two, but two representations may have the same generic constituent upon restriction to SP6. Now the definition of, of the LG, the parameterization passes by way of SP6. So injectivity is not obvious because as I mentioned earlier, the, the map from SP6 to PSP6 is not surjective. The possible ambiguity is ruled out by an argument involving the spin L function of GSP6. So since I have a couple of minutes left, let me just say I added a few pages. So this is from their, our paper. This is precisely what we need to show. To show that it's injective, it's enough to show. So suppose we have a Galois parameter for G2 that remains irreducible in SO7, which is our case for the supercuspidal. Yeah, the supercuspidal parameters remain irreducible in SO7, not necessarily in GL7, but in SO7. Then there exists a representation with that parameter, such that if, if the, uh, if theta seven of pi is different from theta seven of pi tensor with omega, I think this, this notation is not the same as the one I've been using. So theta seven here is the representation of PSP six is, is different from its, from its uh, so the character is then trivial on, on the image of SP six, then the Shahidi L function is holomorphic, is the spin L function using the realization of GSP6 as a Levy subgroup of F4, right? So this is getting, this is getting pretty deep into the theory of, uh, of exceptional, uh, exceptional groups and Eisenstein series. The final, like, so to show that it's injective, it's enough to, to construct for each parameter a global datum F, the representation of the globally generic representation and the character, which is basically what we said, a global character with this property. This goes, and then uh, why is this enough? Well, this goes by analyzing the, uh, the Shahidi's, uh, Shahidi's uh, theory of this, of this L function, the spin L function. All right, so, so that's all. Uh, are there any questions? 
firstly, Michael, thank you very much for a wonderful talk. We have to imagine everybody's applauding at the same time. We can't hear right. that. But uh, if there are questions, maybe you can, uh, we have a few minutes for questions. Uh, maybe you can send them to me through chat and then I can just ask you to uh, ask your question. Uh, so it's, firstly, it's very impressive work. Uh, you've brought together a lot of different ingredients uh, into, into uh, play here. Uh, I mean, to get started, I mean, you had to go to the dual reductive pairs because there, there's no trace formula approach to, to what you're doing? Not yet, no. There's the only trace formula approach is, the, uh, is beyond endoscopy, and that is, uh, that's not. Not ready yet. Right. Uh, I don't see questions coming through chat. Uh, so if um, we just give them a minute in case people are feeling shy. Now is the time to ask a question. Maybe I can I can ask one to ah, Shekhar, <laughs> yes. Hi, hi Shekhar. Hi. So is, do you think there would be a method which avoids all this elytic deformation theory and something which sort of is more traditional? Well, I think that's another way of asking uh, Kumar's question. Yeah. And, uh, you know, as you know, we tried to prove this for uh, for local fields of positive characteristic, and there was a uh, an obstruction. You know, instead, at some point, uh, using the trace formula, there's a globalization argument, and uh, and uh, and uh, local and deformation theory. Uh, the trace formula, the twisted trace formula argument, does not work at present for exceptional groups. Now I very much hope that that part of the argument can be made to work so that it would be possible to, uh, if, if there's a parameterization, if there's a parameterization uh, of automorphic, cosmological automorphic representations to carry out the same, uh, the same construction for all, uh, all, all uh, reductive groups. Uh, and the, the the template for that is in our paper uh, over function fields, uh, our paper with Buckler. Uh, but the uh, the parameterization. The other point is that you don't get Galois parameterizations uh, for groups other than G two uh, because you don't have this exceptional because somehow you have to get to a GLN and the exceptional. Uh, correspondence that does get you to GLN, GL7, or G2. Okay. There's a question here from uh, Hei Zhang Li. Yes, so uh, let me look at it. Yes, we yes we need the well big residual image. We need the oddness in uh, Carrie Venton Berger as well, and uh, and uh, the. Uh, because otherwise, you need there's a there's a, a uh, an Euler characteristic calculation. So the big residual image is certainly certainly needed, but the oddness is also needed in order to uh, get the the invariance, the local invariance, to work out. There's a question from David Hansen. I would request people who have a question to uh, ask the question yourself uh, verbally, so that we're not all staring at our screens. Uh, um, well, the Hodge Tate weights. That particular list of Hodge Tate weights uh, is, well, they, there aren't that many uh, possibilities. That's the simplest, uh, the simplest list. Uh, you can get different ones depending on the, on, on the discrete series representation. You choose discrete series representations of G2, and each choice gives you a different uh, a set of Hodge Tate weights. This is the simplest one, uh, but there, there are, you can get infinitely many, a collection, infinitely many depending on the discrete series. You want to make sure that the discrete series has a property. You want to avoid certain discrete series because when you transfer it to a GL7, you want to make sure that the result is still regular. But that, that's easy to satisfy. Now, I just realized that uh, just while preparing this, that this particular list of Hodge state weights are in, they are in uh, an arithmetic progression. And so one can twist by uh, one can one can do one can twist by a as in my original paper on 
on the tensor product trick and get to uh, something that is uh, for which potential automorphy actually works without any additional uh, Piatic Hodge theory. So with, with, with some additional work. Okay, are there any other questions? I don't see any other questions right now. So, uh, uh, Michael, you, have you given the link for your uh, paper, or have you posted it? Oh, the link for the paper. There's a, there's a, there should be, a, well, it's on archive. The paper's on archive, and you can get to it by choosing the the names of the three authors, or you can get to my homepage at Columbia and go to publications, and there's a link there. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Uh, let's thank the speaker again. Uh, the next uh, next week, our speaker is Ritavrata Munshi from Indian Statistical Institute and the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. He's going to speak about subconvexity of L functions. We have either already posted or will be posting the introductory talk. So those who are uh, interested can see that uh, talk in uh, today or tomorrow or sometime before next week, and next week he will give his actual seminar talk. The following week will be uh, Sujata from University of British Columbia, uh, and uh, future, future talks will be announced uh, as we line up the speakers. Uh, it's meant to be uh, an inclusive type of seminar, uh, giving an opportunity for graduate students to get the background material necessary to at least follow the words <laughs> that are being used in the talks. Uh, uh, and so please um, uh, take advantage of that and take advantage of the fact that our, all our speakers are very wonderful and willing to sit patiently and answer your questions. <laughs> so thanks again and see you all next week. Thank you. Bye.